Hello everybody and welcome to this little video. Uh, we are down in deepest Devon. Well, we're not deepest Devon, are we? Mid-Devon. We're mid-Devon. Do a mid-Devon accent for me. I can't because I'm originally from Essex. Oh, fair point. Fair so. point. Um, <laughs> as you may have gathered, we are at the home of 55 Details and we're joined here by Nicola, Nicola Reed. Uh, and how long have you been in this unit for? In this unit? Yes. Um, I would probably say about two and a half years, I'd say. Yeah, so properly settled. Yeah. Um, and it's really kind of cool setup. We've got, uh, if you do hear random noises, it's because we have tame sparrows <laughs> in the building. Yeah. Um, but Nicola thankfully has built this sort of outer cage thing, this, this separate unit, which protects the motor cars. And speaking of motor cars, we have a very, very special car in here today. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, it is the Audi S8 final edition. Yes. As I've been told. What generation of S8 is it? I mean, the sort of thing you should know as a detailer. I would never clue. <laughs> I would never clue. I'm teasing. Uh, this is a D2 S8, and um, we've been joined here by Michaela of D2 Doctor, who's currently manning the cameras. Um, <laughs> but essentially, this is a very special car that I accidentally bought on eBay a while ago, and then accidentally sold it to Michaela, and now Michaela's accidentally sold it onto somebody else. Um, but it has uh, some interesting paint defects, which you've been spending all week getting looking good, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, tell us what was wrong with the car, paint-wise. Um, paint-wise, um, what it is is basically over the years of outdoor storage um when sort of moss or algae all that sort of stuff leaves just generally outdoorsy stuff sits on the paintwork for far too long mm -hmm. um over that time it unfortunately makes almost like an imprint in the lacquer it's in the clear coat yeah. yeah so basically it's paintwork etching uh, as it's referred to um yeah and it can take that element of wet sanding to help bring it down back to the normal sort of level. You see, you've completely spot my next question because one thing, normally when we go to a detailing shop, there's lots of machine polishing happening on. Yeah. And today, indeed, you've been, with your, your flex have been polishing all over the place. Yeah. But uh, the main project here was the wet sanding of the clear coat on mm -hmm. the car. And bear in mind, this is what we call Avis Silver. And the colour code for that is, Michaela? You're putting me on the spot. L7 something. <laughs> uh, you see, L7 something. L7 something. Um, and it's a very special colour and this, when uh, Nicola said it's a final edition, it's one of potentially 24 or 26 cars we believe in the UK and bear in mind it was UK only the final edition and it got all sorts of extra equipment like extra leather and this one has got some seriously sexy red leather that goes almost all the way up. It feels mm. like, a, like a boudoir almost when you're sat in it. It certainly does, yeah. Bizarrely, that's the second time I've used the word boudoir in one day, which is worrying. <laughs> um, but it's a very special car and we uh, rescued it basically from eBay and um, Michaela's been doing a lot of mechanical work and, yep. and has entrusted you to all the appearance or the vast majority of the appearance work mm -hmm. on it and um, how have you found working on it? Uh, it's actually been really satisfying um, hard work but yes when it's when you get that great result at the end of it then it's mm -hmm. it's worth it it's worth the time you put into it. And you started at P3000? The 3000 grit yeah. and then 3000 Trizac and then 6000 Trizac. And then so. polishing what compounds you've been using auto bead compounds? Yeah right? auto beads heavy cut compound Gotcha. Um, which is fantastic for not only the cutting side, but generally allowing a, a degree of the gloss finish in it as well, definitely. So it, it's a diminishing polish, I guess. It breaks yeah. down nicely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the idea is ultimately, what I don't know what protection we're thinking about ultimately. I presume a ceramic coating um, is description? Not a ceramic coating at the moment. Oh, we are, yeah. We okay, are ceramic a ceramic coating then. <laughs> I convinced her. I convinced her. Um, and the idea is this car is absolutely as it left the factory. Yes. Um, and the number plate is hidden by your other smart number plate, but I believe it is an 03 car, 02 car. 02 car. So uh, it is already 19 years old, mm. Bert Maths. And, um, but for a car that has done, and it's done quite a high mileage, it's 170 something thousand, yep. uh, which is quite a high mileage for an Audi. It's nothing for a Subaru, but for an Audi, it's, you know, it's no. quite an achievement. <laughs> and uh, I can see somebody seething behind the camera. Um, and uh, so to look so good now mm. um, is really a testament to your work. Yeah. And, and things like the um, bright work and stuff, it's got anodized aluminium, which I know Michaela's been having a go at, mm. which is one of those things that either you can fix or you completely can't fix. Yeah, and as Michaela's going to, there's a couple of trims that will be replaced. Yeah. Um, but she has brought up a lot of them as well, which it just all fits in as one, one original look now, a yeah. very clean original look. Yeah, so. no, it's, it's a very nice car. Mm. So tell us about 55 Details. Tell us about how it started. What got you into car detailing? What, what did you study at school? Um, school, I was actually sport, sport, sport. It was PE, everything. Okay. Um, I did used to be a BMX racer. Right. Um, 
Olympics would have been the goal at that point. Um, unfortunately, bad accident wiped me out, so it Same didn't go me. down I that route. Same with me, I could have been route. astronaut if it wasn't <laughs> being fat. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and then it was general life kind of took over, mm-hmm. um, being an adult, which is never fun. No, I've read about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, and from then it was kind of just a love for cars, really, getting getting my licence and everything like that. I mm-hmm. um, was very much in the modding scene, mm-hmm. um, walked away from that probably five years ago or so. You um, can you ever walk away from the modding scene? No, you don't car really. Modification, not mods and rockers for the more chronologically <laughs> enhanced of our watchership. But um, uh, how how come? What was what what car? Did, please don't say Vauxhall Corsa with all the wings. It was on. Vauxhall Astra. Oh, that's fine then. <laughs> that's cool. Um, yeah, it was a lot of Vauxhall Astras actually at the time. Yeah, big um, wings and side skirts and spoilers and light underneath it. And mm, all that jazz. One of the builds went a bit extreme, yes. But, so you've got uh, over that phase. Yeah, that's yep. it. It's That phase has gone. Um, You're now, now a BMW enthusiast. Yes, yeah, it's now BMWs. I've had yeah. like, what, three? Well, let's move on. Um, <laughs> um, so how did you actually get into detailing? It was literally just doing it for the... Um, um, yeah, job-wise. Um, I started as a valeter pretty much in used car sales um mm. it still technically is we're on site of another one that my partner runs um yeah. so yeah it was, it was mainly that and then just wanting to really learn all of stuff like the wet sanding um i did have a time in a body shop as well mm-hmm. to get the true understanding of it all um, I've been to the body shop and that too. was lovely smells <laughs> and that was that was pretty much the goal really yeah. um finding all the real stuff then starting a business, pretty much. That's a, kind of the right way to do it. Mm. Sort of starting a business, right, today I'm going to be a detailer. <laughs> um, and how long ago was that? How, when, when did 55 Details sort of commence? That would have probably been about the three-year mark. Um, so I did do the booth and the unit and that sort of quite early on. Mm-hmm. Um, been quite fortunate because, like I say, I am on the site of um, my partner's sales yeah. place, pretty much. So it helps with that aspect. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's going with the process of it, and I, I just every day is a learning day for it. Um, and again, with the experience from body shops and things like that. But as I was sort of talking to Michaela before about, um, I was also fortunate enough with the sales cars when they came in, mm-hmm. um, and we knew they were going to the body shop. It was very much uh, well, like let's try, yeah. and if I if I bugger it up. I bugger it up, you know, but it also really taught me the limits of a lot of things that you can see visually. And I think the best part of training is actually being able to push it beyond the yes, boundaries because yeah. then you know where you can exactly. put it back to. I knew it was going to the body shop anyway, so, so yeah. it didn't really matter. And, and it's not a customer car, it's a sales no, car. No, exactly. So, it's, so it's, it's, yeah. it's certainly taught me my boundaries and limits of, like say, seeing, feeling as well. Mm-hmm. So I am hard of hearing as well, so a lot of the stuff I actually do is from the feel of the machine as opposed to how it kind of sounds, yeah. in a way. So No, that makes, makes sense. And what's been interesting, the last couple of years, we've been in quite close contact, particularly the last sort of year or so, mm. because with the challenge, and it's a challenge that all detailers have been facing with things like COVID. Yes. But also, how do you stand out in an industry? You know, we've got quite a few members down here. There are quite mm. a few other detailers in and around. And Devon, you know, there's only so much you can detail a donkey. Mm. So you're, you're dealing with probably quite a... I'm with two Devonians here. Well, one Devonian, one Essex. So I'm <laughs> probably going to get lynched or something. But um, in, in terms of... It's not central London in terms of supercars. Yes. Anyway. And there are quite a lot of nice cars hidden away in fancy mm. big estates, I've yep. noticed, and sort of big farms and stuff like that. Um, but at the beginning of the year, you were sort of feeling... Would it be fair to say a bit lost? Yes, very much so. In terms of needing a bit of direction. And I remember we spoke for a while and just talked yes. about some tips, get your website up and running. Yeah. Uh, you had various different sort of suppliers and stuff who were kind of, you felt, didn't necessarily be fully compatible with the way you wanted to go. No, no, um, definitely not. And you found, and recently, talking to you now, I mean, bear in mind, when we were initially talked, you were very, the word I would use is downhearted. Yes, massively. That's possibly even a euphemism. Mm. Um, now, you're bright and shiny and perky and excited. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so, it's, I mean, and it's not just this Audi that's in the building. It has that effect. They're very happy. <laughs> um, but it was the a whole new optimism. And, and what I really wanted to talk about slightly is, is how it didn't take much. We were talking about modifying your website mm-hmm. because your website you designed to be pretty rather than functional. Yes, yeah, very much so. It was something I'd done and yes, I was proud of it, yeah. but 
yeah, it wasn't serving the purpose that it was intended to. And, and, and those, those tweaks, it was a lot of little tweaks, yeah. wasn't it? And it just, it made the, all the difference. But they're the bits that, even those tweaks, yeah, sure, helped advise mm. what to do, but you've done them on your site. You yes. haven't had to go and spend £5,000 no, on a new website. No, I've done it on like myself, that. yeah. Um, so you pulled yourself out from that kind of marketing side of yeah. things. Um, and then you end up with a, a slight snowball effect. When things start going better, they get mm-hmm. better and better. Yeah. Obviously, aided slightly by the opening up of the country and people allowed to come out. Yes, of course. Probably yeah. has something to do with it as well. Mm. Um, and also, you've recently um, teamed up with Autobead. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, Autobead's been around. We got sent some Autobead stuff many years ago, like three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was, at the time, it was sort of fairly average in yeah. terms of what we got. And it was a new brand um, and then disappeared. And now it's come back like an explosion. It has, nice massively. A good explosion, yeah. not, a, not a bad They've explosion. not long rebranded in terms yeah. of their image and things. Um, but even like the products, they, they genuinely listen to us as detailers that want to help. Um, and the involvement with them has been second to none. Just so you've got the benefit of a company that's been around for a while, because yep. there are lots of ones that pop up every three months, but yep. this one's definitely been around for a number of years, but that's got the energy and enthusiasm and responsiveness, shall we mm-hmm. say, of a younger company. Yes, yeah. Um, and working with detailers, you know, yes. manufacturers, you get manufacturers who are detailers sometimes, and mm-hmm. they turn into manufacturing, which can work very well, the likes of Envy Car Care and stuff like that. Yep. Then you've got the people who are manufacturers, and they know about chemicals, but they know jack about actually touching cars. Yeah. So it's almost like they've learnt it by rote sort of mm. thing. And then you've got these guys in the middle, like Autobeat, who are kind of a, working really closely with detailers, but they've also got, I believe, a sort of chemical background. Yep. Um, so they've got that kind of expertise. Yeah. Um, and it is amazing how partnering up with the right company or companies, and yes. I always suggest a, a blend of companies because otherwise you are completely dependent on one company, which yeah. can then shaft you. Um, but having that association can really help you and you can help them and you're both sort of... Yes, massively. Simultaneously, it expanding. helped me with my confidence. I'd say, um, like, like you said, you've helped me massively as well. Um, and I think with with yourself and Autobeat sort of coming together at the same time, along with a few other sort of contracts that I've managed to pick up. Yeah, it's all just massively one eighty in comparison yeah. to not really was. that long ago. You know, and it's yeah. uh, it is a phenomenal moment to be in, and I'm. I'm pretty chuffed of it and i, I yeah, just think is. if anyone else is going through that yeah there is just, light at the end of the tunnel yeah just yeah. keep your head down and keep doing what you know is right but also listen to people who, yeah. who can help and and at the same time is the the thing is for example just using your, your website as an example mm-hmm. it was small tweaks here and there yep. that suddenly came together and it was it was all from my point of view i looked at it, it was usability yeah. You know, I'm coming onto a website. I want to find out what services you offer. Yeah. Uh, what you what it costs and what the benefits are. Yeah. And if you're coming in with that mindset as a customer, yeah. you'd kind of written it as a detailer. Mm. And so it was kind of slightly backwards, but just Yeah, it was very much backwards. Yeah. So I remember you also saying about I had like the about me section right at the top thinking, yeah. "Oh, they want to know everything about me." But you were like, "Well, no, if they want to, they'll find that." Exactly. But what it's about is literally going, boom, this is what I offer, this yeah. is what I do, then do the rest, of, uh, you know. It is. I mean, it's easy to think, I mean, customers do invest in you as a detailer mm. because ultimately, you know, the products you use, they may or may not be able to get, but certainly yeah. other detailers will be using them. Mm. What they're investing in is the care and attention that you're going to take on the car. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some who, and it's bizarre, we, we get a lot of people calling up the, the PVD office asking for a job sort of thing. And yeah. you you get people who just write, right, I'm price-led, I'm quality-led, or I'm trust-led. Yeah. And I've had many who've spent three hours giving me lots of really deeply personal information about their cars on the understanding that nobody else will ever hear about it. Right. Um, and so you do get some who, who are going to read that about you thing. Yes. And had, I've even had some people ask if they've been CRB, and I'm like, oh, is it a, a school or somewhere that's relevant? He said, no, no, I just want to make sure they're not, <laughs> you're not dodgy. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is, actually. <laughs> um, so, I just, yeah, if you're coming around to a big country house or something, it certainly is. And yeah, there are some yeah, guys who have never met even their customers. They're just given a door code, they come yeah. in, do the job, and they're out again. <laughs> and then other ones who more or less start, I've had phone calls where they actually start, how much? And I'm sitting there thinking, for what? Yeah. I mean, if you want me, mind, body, and soul, it's going to be at least £6. <laughs> 
Um, and, uh, you know, it's high prices for Swindon. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and that, that is all they care about. And I know they're going to be troublesome customers. Mm. And so I generally just advise them to go somewhere else. Yeah. Think, you know, whereas other ones who I know they sound interesting. I've got this collection here. I know about detailing a bit, but not enough. I'd like to learn more. I want to see mm. it happening. The rest of it, I'm like, oh, this is, this is a long-termer. Yeah. Um, and again, one leads to another. So with this car... Um, partly because of Michaela's great sort of reputation as the uh, go-to for all yeah. D2s. Um, the, you know, there are others already in the pipeline coming, coming via club and via Michaela. So it's, and it is that kind of following. Mm. And I was saying earlier, it's all about finding that niche, yeah. um, using the example of the Tesla taillights. And the, the same as with detailing. There are some detailers out there who are so famous within a car club Mm. Now, it could be a very specialist car club. It could be the Vauxhall Astra VXR 888 edition in white. Yes, club, yeah. You know, yeah. and there are only six blokes there, but they're always having their car <laughs> club, you know. um, But on the other one, it could be a much grander scale, you know, like yes. the MG Owners Club is huge. I mean, I think it's got the same population as Ireland. Um, so, you know, finding those niches is key. What is the sort of, what's your dream car to be working on? If you could get in with any club... And obviously Subaru's the top of that list, but if Subaru was off the list, and yeah. was off the list where, what, what cars do you most enjoy touching? Um, it is a huge variety. And I have to admit, when I first started the business, you kind of do always think of your, 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 well, your modern cars or your supercars. Mm-hmm. But since getting into the side that's the classic... Retro. The classic side... Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I am a massive fan of the old Mustang Shelby. Oh, okay. A massive so fan. So proper classic. So yeah. yeah, I do think yeah, yeah, it'd have to be so an a bit older of Americana. Yes, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, because yeah. it's just well, generally the, the looks of them, and obviously yeah. you can't deny the the noises. The noises. The that noises. Make it pretty good. <laughs> Indeed. Well, the interesting thing with, with with we used to do work quite closely with some of the American car mags and stuff like that, and they're mm. a, they're a different set. There's a guy ex member called uh, Andy who's who's really hot on on the American stuff, and he and he found that niche. He he's into it himself. He's had yeah. Mustangs and all the rest of it, but um, he had that reputation within the Americana group. And some of them were very odd. They would only do their own car. They wouldn't let anyone else touch it. Mm. But some of them wanted you know him to work his magic on it yeah and he must have done i would say dozens but i'd probably say it's in three figures because he found that niche so if you can find that niche down here and i believe american cars <laughs> in devon are pretty popular yeah they're just there's there seems to be a few that i mean the classic shows around yeah. this area are massive and um i think it certainly suits for the route i'm definitely going to try and sort of focus on um have you thought how to approach that i mean i think some big boots maybe going around on a horse (laughs) you know that works cowboy hat (laughs) possibly i might have to get my own classic that's blending that might be a good idea incognito yeah i always wanted an amc pacer but i think i probably get laughed at (laughs) but um no i think that's a that's a grand plan and that is just it with with detail is is how you can go from really in the doldrums Mm. to really flying and i think you're enjoying work at the moment yeah it's um yeah i still can't quite believe it really and i mean even even this this happening right now is Mm -hmm. just is such a a switch to how i was feeling literally a few months back yeah um which is mental but yeah i'm well you're also pushing your limits because i know you're not mad keen on being in front of cameras and talking no i'm certainly not more (laughs) more of the hiding man and that is so common in Mm. in the detail environment i mean you know if you're saying right i want a job where i can be in a shed with a car and nobody else talks to me for five days the sort of character who does that is not what we call a socialite. No, I'm not the best at it, I have to admit. I certainly respond how I'm being sort of to. being spoke to. Yeah. Um, the second someone's relaxed, um, you know, I, I look after a couple of Musta- uh, Mustangs. That's the wish. That's on your head. Um, yeah. <laughs> Aston's, um, mm-hmm. Aston Martins, and all three owners are typically really, really laid back, mm-hmm. really, do you know what I mean, really polite, everything like and that. You're an Aston, you're a bit of a bit of a cab like, <laughs> oh, everything's absolutely fine but it just when they rocked up for quotes and things straight away I, I feel at ease when mm-hmm. certainly when the customer is a lot more relaxed um, when they're not I tend to let any words out I seem to struggle just on that aspect <laughs> it, well yeah if someone straight away sort of says the attitude of sell yourself it's, it's hard to yeah it's a balance though isn't it because mm. if, you, if you sell yourself too hard it looks like the hard sell and most mm. people are put off by that I li- if, if, it, if it was a world where you could literally go trust me 
Yeah. I'd be amazing at that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that 21st would be... century. Maybe in Japan or something where people yeah. do actually have trust. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, and I, I, it is a difficult way to pitch it. I mean, I have seen many detailers, and I, quite often we get phoned up by detailers mm. in, inside and outside the association, and um, they'll say, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but mm. the next 20 minutes is spent blowing so hard on that trumpet they turn mm. blue. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it does pick up, and there is a... I think there's a quiet confidence. I think the, the yeah. key is, when you're going around a car... You show the customer, right, this is a paint defect, mm-hmm. this is called a hologram, this is caused by rotary polishing, or yes. what, you know, and, and just explain. And the appearances, you know, the different colours and the way it appears, they're actually, you know, straight lines because of this or because of that. Yeah. Show your knowledge. Mm. And they'll be like, crikey Moses, A, I've just yeah. had a 20 minute conversation on paint, yeah. which is pretty special. <laughs> um, and B, you obviously know more about this than I do, and mm. I'm happy to get on to you because there are a lot of people who are still under the impression you wash a car with a sponge, yeah. it takes you 10 minutes, yeah. and that's that, and there's no more to it. Yeah. So, Hopefully, if they've come this far, they're already aware of what's going on. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm just in here. This doesn't look like my normal Tesco car wash. <laughs> Other car washes do appear. Um, <laughs> so I'm just worried about getting sued by Tesco. They'll take all my club car points, <laughs> both of them. Um, so that's cool. And in terms of the future, this unit, you've got it to kind of where you want, or is it like work in progress the whole time? I think it's always a work in progress. I think if you find that, well, anything actually, times change as well, don't they? Yeah. A lot more comes out, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's more. If it comes and it looks like it would suit, then uh, yeah, it'd carry on being built. But um, I don't know. The only thing I'd probably add is probably ex- extension into this bay bit. Just protection um, from the birds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, we do get the uh, nest every year. So <laughs> I would have bought my shotgun if you told me. <laughs> it's, um, actually, I wouldn't. I like them. They're cool. Um, <laughs> just really upset. But um, anyway, your plans for this year mm-hmm. briefly um you've got some stuff happening with auto bead that i'm sure you'll be announcing yes. in the future yeah i've got quite a few things going on with them so secret, <laughs> um and um yeah what i would do is have a look at nicola's website 55 details what's the website I should know this. Dot com. Dot com. There we go. That's simple. <laughs> um, and yeah, in terms of any, if you've got a retro classic, if you've got an Audi D2, she kind of knows her way around them now. It's, it's a long walk from front to back, has to be said. Yeah, they um, are quite long. <laughs> and uh, no, it's been an absolute pleasure spending the day with you here today. I appreciate you coming along and, and for the opportunity, certainly to Michaela. Um, well, getting the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's, all, it's all fun. And uh, we are going to go into more detail on how you've been touching this Audi. Um, <laughs> Uh, in the magazine, which will be in issue 14, which will be out in December 2021. Cool. Um, if it's after December 2021, it's either out or we're very late and panicky. So it's going to be one of those two. Um, and, uh, well, as I say, thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, we'll do you. some cool, sexy cut scenes of the Audi um, so for your enjoyment. Anyway, Brilliant. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll be back on your screen soon.